Getting the object to fit in the field is a far more important consideration than arc seconds per pixel. That's a quote that you can find in an article on Starazona's website on Harold Nyquist and the Nyquist Limit. It's an extremely well written, though also an extremely technical article on aspects of resolution from the Nyquist Limit to the resolving power of telescopes. A sometimes brain achingly deep read, but well worth it if you enjoy such things. But I liked how, at the conclusion, it pointed out that sometimes all the math doesn't matter, and what you have to do is focus on whether or not you can fit the entire object into your field of view. Fundamentally, if you want a beautiful image and you want to resolve as much detail as possible, that becomes a necessity. Elsewhere, the article discusses how, if an object is large, you might want a low focal length telescope to fit the entire thing into your field of view. But, if the object is small and distant, like a remote galaxy, you might want a high focal length telescope to fit the field of view. I'm going to add to this that sometimes we might want a high focal length regardless, even though it takes more work, more effort, and more technical understanding to create a good image. Because greater magnification through the telescope is going to pull more detail on your sensor. And I'm going to show you now exactly why. We're looking here at images of the Pinwheel Galaxy. A huge galaxy, far bigger than our own Milky Way with about a trillion stars, some 21 million light years away. But because it is 21 million light years away, it is small in the view of a telescope unless you happen to have a high focal length. Right now, here we are seeing it in the Hubble telescope's view, and the Hubble does have a high focal length. And, though some persons might object at first, that high focal length is a key element of how and why the Hubble can resolve so much detail within the image. Here, on the other hand, is an image of the Pinwheel Galaxy in an 81mm telescope with just 447mm of focal length. That 81 millimeters of aperture severely limits how much detail of the galaxy can be resolved. But let's just pretend that, hypothetically, we could get a lot more detail in that image. Let's in fact take an image of the Pinwheel Galaxy taken with a 203 millimeter telescope and shrink it down to about the magnification that we get from the smaller telescope. In other words, we're going to pretend that we were able to image this galaxy with a telescope with a low focal length, but a very high aperture. This should give us an image of the galaxy that is not highly magnified, but there should also be a lot of detail resolved in the image. The problem is, our hypothetical telescope, even though we are going to imagine that it can resolve a great deal of detail of the Pinwheel Galaxy, which we can see in the right, it's going to have to place that galaxy on the camera sensor, which we can see in the middle. At a low focal length, the galaxy is not going to take up very much space on the sensor. And this is going to create a severe restriction in how much detail can actually be resolved. To understand why, we have to first understand that a camera sensor is essentially made up of a whole bunch of tiny dots called pixels. These pixels record the information in light. Each pixel represents a piece of information, and the more real estate an image takes up on the sensor, the more pieces of information about the object are recorded. But if an image is small, like our portrayal of the Pinwood Galaxy is here, then no matter how good our optics are, no matter how much detail the telescope can theoretically resolve, fewer pieces of information will be captured on the sensor. The information is restricted by the number of pixels that the image occupies. We can see this if we try to expand the size of the image. No matter how sharp the optics might have been able to record the image, if the image does not occupy much real estate on the camera sensor, not much information is recorded. And so, if we try to crop in and take a closer look at the image, we won't see all that resolution that the telescope was theoretically capable of. Rather, the image that we will see will be soft. And this is because zooming in on the image doesn't reveal information hidden away. All that's happening is that we are expanding the information contained within that limited number of pixels across our viewing medium. In most cases, probably a computer monitor. If on the other hand, our theoretical telescope with a very high aperture capable of capturing a great deal of detail is paired with a high focal length, our image of the Pinwheel Galaxy will be much magnified meaning it will take up a lot more real estate on the camera sensor. 
And this means that many more of the pixels within the sensor will record information on the object. Remember, fundamentally, the pixels are pieces of potential information. No matter what the sharpness is that your telescope can resolve, if the focal length is low, the magnification will be low, meaning that an object will occupy only a small number of pixels on the sensor. And if the focal length is high, the magnification is high, meaning that the object will occupy more pixels on the sensor. More pixels are more recorded information. Thus, when the image is viewed, we will be able to see more detail because more information has been captured on the sensor. And if for some reason we want to zoom in on the image, more sharpness will be conveyed. And that's also because more information has been recorded among the greater number of pixels that were used on the sensor. We can see this with a simple comparison. On the left and the right are the same image, both recorded with the same telescope. The difference is a lower focal length or less magnified image is recorded on the left, and that image occupies less real estate on a camera sensor. On the right, the same galaxy was filmed with the same telescope, but at full focal length, so the image occupies much more real estate on the camera sensor. Now, when we zoom in on the image on the left, we end up with a softer image with less detail resolved, because no matter how good the telescope's optics were, and no matter what the telescope's potential to resolve information per arc second, the tremendous limiting factor here is the lower focal length or lower magnification means fewer pixels on the camera sensor recorded the image on the left, so less information was saved. So, as you can see, when that image is expanded to match the same image on the right, again shot through the same telescope, the less magnified image on the left is softer. There is just, simply, less information in the image recorded at a lower focal length. But what if we wanted to record a much larger deep sky object, such as the Orion Nebula shown here? I shot this image of the Orion Nebula using very brief exposures over 16.33 minutes last summer, and used three different exposures to combine the very different brightnesses of the Orion Nebula in a high dynamic range format so that we could see everything from the brightest regions of the Tarpezium Cluster at the Orion's core to the dimmer regions outside in the nebulous gases that surround the Orion. Now as deep sky objects go, the Orion Nebula is pretty big in the sky, about twice the diameter of the full moon. So would it be worth going with a high focal length telescope on this target? Well, that depends on your goals. I captured this image with that 81mm aperture 447mm focal length telescope that I mentioned in the example earlier. And this is what I wanted, a high dynamic range broad panorama of the Orion Nebula that fills the entire sensor at this focal length. And since I can fill the sensor with the target, I have all the sharpness and information I need to develop it at this focal length. So in regard to my goals for this image, how this focal length fills my camera sensors meets my needs exactly. But on the other hand, if I wanted to be able to really expand the image, get in close and take a look at the fine detail contained within the Orion Nebula, I would absolutely do better to image with a higher focal length telescope. It would be more work though, for a number of reasons. One, high focal length telescopes are going to be slower, which is to say they will have a higher F ratio. So exposures will have to be longer. Also, because I won't be able to fit as much of this nebula into a single frame, I would have to shoot this as a mosaic over two or more frames and possibly over more than a single night. But if I were to do that, I might be able to do something like this, get it really close to the Orion and resolve some of the gorgeous detail hidden away within that nebula. And I could zoom in even further if I wanted to take a look at something very specific and special, such as the bright trapezium cluster that occupies a tiny space deep in the heart of the Orion Nebula. Ultimately, what this means for us as astrophotographers is that fast, as in fast F ratios, isn't everything. And for that matter, no matter how much resolution your telescope's optics or aperture allow you theoretically to resolve, effort should be made in the form of applying focal length to ensure that the target structure fills as much of the camera sensor as possible. And as I create this video, I'm reminded of the old parable about the tortoise and the hare where sometimes slow and steady wins the race. Well, the cost of focal length, unfortunately, is slower imaging because it drives up the F ratio. But if the goal is resolving small structures or fine detail, that is the price that must be paid. So, like every other action of photography, every decision that we make has a price. 
the price of focal length is more imaging time, but the value added is that more sensor pixels or information is resolved. Even if you're in a place where the seeing conditions are not theoretically ideal, sometimes that price is worth paying. And of course, you yourself must decide if you would be happy with a quickly shot image that presents a broader panorama, or if your goal is a slow and patient plotting toward as much detail as possible. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like these videos, please let me know and take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe. Now, as always, have a blast doing astrophotography, learning about the stars, and get out there and shoot the sky.